Okay, hello everybody. This is a piece of spruce wood, um, fairly wide grain, not too bad. I chose spruce to make for this video because um, it's a lot like pine, the color. It's a lighter color. I have lots of cedar slabs I could use for this video, but I said, no, I went and spent $35 to make this video. So you guys, if you have pine, all you need is a jigsaw, a torch, uh, I'll show you throughout the video, okay? So what we're gonna make here is a tree hanger. Well, I'm also gonna show you how I selected this piece. You can see this uh, flat grain. Okay, so you're, you're carving into the face grain here. This would be edge grain, but I'll show you how I selected right now. 30 bucks for a two by 12, eight foot of spruce. And spruce isn't very qual good quality wood. Definitely not cheap right now. Wonder who's making all the money. <laughs> so, don't be fooled by the um, saw cuts on the end grain and the true grain. See, they go both ways there. Always look through the saw cuts at the grain. There's there's face grain, okay? You don't, for the Shosugi band, you don't want to do, see that? See how it's going up and down there? You don't want to do edge grain because you're just going to get straight lines when you do it. If you carve through face grain, I'm trying to find the perfect piece. If you carve through face grain, like you'd be carving into the tree, so you're carving through layers. Here's a good look. So look at this board. Okay, it's hard to see the grain there because the saw cuts, but I can see that there is some uh, edge grain and there is some face grain. You'll see when I show the top of the board. So on the left side, that would be edge grain, okay? You don't want that because you're going to see the lines, but see that? See the how the wood does that? This is the center of the tree. Avoid getting that piece for sure because it's going to crack. See the center? And that's all edge grain. See how it goes up and down straight lines? That's edge grain. You don't want that unless you're looking for the straight lines. Okay, here's here would be face grain. See how it's rounded? And you're going to be carving through the layers. Here's a perfect example of face grain. Okay, so you look at the way the texture is on the front of it. See, the, that would be edge grain, but it does turn into face grain. See that texture? That's face grain. That's what you want to look for. Okay, and look at the thing. I'm going to show you. That's it. That's it. Okay, so Larry Dibbs, my buddy on Vancouver Island, he's a wicked uh, drawing artist. I'm not very good at drawing anything, so I got him to do a quick sketch, sketch for a tree for me. So I'll show it right here. So there's Larry's sketch. So it's going to be like an oak tree, okay? So I want to decide, I don't want to waste any, that's a loud plane. I don't want to waste any wood. So I'm going to sketch this on. So the trunk, I want the grain to be up and down. You know, like it's a lot easier to carve just one piece and make the whole piece one piece. That makes sense. Just so you don't have to do any cuts. But I think for this tree, I want to cut a piece here and then turn it so that the oak tree is more like a kind of, it's not an oak tree, just we'll call it like a round looking tree top. And it's going to have the roots. I think it's better if the green goes this way. So for the trunk, the trunk and the roots, the green will be going up and down. But for the round part where the leaves would be, I think it's better. It's a lot more work. I don't know why I'm doing it, but I figured I should do it and um, do it, do it, do it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so this is a 2 by 12 by the way, so you can even use like a fat with old fence board if you want a smaller model. And, you know, this is for the Dremel carver. I know I'm doing chainsaws and bigger tools, but you can do this with your Dremel with fence boards and a jigsaw, right? So here's going to be the tree, the tree thing, the stump. Here's going to be the top, okay? So what I'm going to do is cut this piece off first, make this I'm sure this doesn't land on my head. Then I'm going to cut it. And um, yeah, and what I'm going to use is my, uh, let me see, let me get it here. This is my battery saw. This is a good uh, homeowner saw, okay? It's a steel MS 140C. I like this saw because it comes with a quarter pitch sprocket. So all you have to do is buy the, go to steel, just buy a bar. And this is 03 gauge chain. I don't want to complicate it for you, but this is, this saw here, once again, this MS, MSA 140, 
is set up ready to carve when you buy it. You buy the saw as a package. It's not too heavy. It's light. It's not loud. You could do it in your backyard. You know, it comes with the saw. It comes with the battery. Okay. And it comes with the charger. And all you have to really do is order from steel is order the carving bar and uh, the new chain and you're set. You're ready to go. You know, so I don't know. I think it's a, I think it's a great investment for somebody wanting to get in a bigger carving. Yeah, maybe I should uh, bring this down a bit so it's... Yeah, I'm going to have to readjust this. It's too dangerous to cut it up there. It'll fall on my head. Okay, that's better. Timber. So now this is nice and solid here. Like I said, you guys, you can use your jigsaw for this. This is solid here now, so I might as well shape it. You see how this uh, tip lets me turn in the wood? That's because it's a carving bar. It's a lot thinner here than a regular bar. Okay, and you notice how I uh, beveled this? Because you're going to see this grain later. This is a Shosugi band, so this stuff's really going to pop out later. I'm glad it's a lot more work to make this piece go like this and sit on the stump. But anyways, I'll get all this cut out. And like I said, you could use a jigsaw. Because you could make this uh, bevel later with a grinder with a sanding pad. I'll show you. Okay. Okay, the top's done. I got this cut out. Now I'm carving the roots. Okay, perfect. This is a quick block out. Okay, so what I've done here, like I said, I'm not good at joinery. This is joining. It's not joining, but whatever. So I just wedged that back. See the top there? And I cut this out. And then it will fit on there like this. Then I'll glue it later and nail it or whatever I got to do. Okay, so let's see. I know this is not going to be the... It's a lot easier to do that other type of tree. Um, I'll show you a picture here. Like a, I'd say like an old rotten tree. I did a big huge one for a wall art memorial piece. If I can show you a picture of it, if I can find it, I'll show it to you. But you see this one will kind of... This still looks a little bit rectangle, so I gotta cut it down. I'm gonna shape it more, make it look more round, I guess. But I don't know, I can't really see it from a far view. Yeah, I'm gonna take some more. Uh... Make it a bit more round. Anyways, just giving you guys an idea. Okay, so this piece on there goes, you spin it. But so here you got, so you think this is a very good tool to have for even just Dremel carvers, okay? It's a, it's a gr uh, angle grinder from Walmart. You can buy a cheap one, buy an expensive one. And this is 36 grit sand, a belt, uh, sanding disc on here, okay? See the orange thing on the back? That's the stopper. And there's a, sand. see how aggressive it is? So I'm just, because this is Shosugi band, there's not going to be any sharp points or undercuts. I'm just going to 
carve some shapes in here and I'll smooth off the outside. Actually, I probably won't even use this. So, you know, if this was going to be a Dremel carving and it's going to be a smaller scale, you could do a bigger scale like this with Dremel carving. If you have a Fordham or a die grinder or whatever you want to use to remove the wood, I'm just going to make some stuff in here and um, make this grain pop, right? You'll see after I burn it how what I'm talking about. But there's not going to be, it's just all going to blend together and stuff like that, okay? So, um, hold on a second here. I'm going to have my desk mask on. This thing has air filters on. Three, two, one. I'm going to have my desk mask on. This thing has air filters in it. It's a rechargeable battery. It's called the Trend. Okay, so I just realized my mic was on the ground, so I don't know how long I'm going to have to do this. I'll have to do a voiceover, but that's just done with my die grinder. I did it super quick, okay? Nothing fancy, nothing. I don't know if this is going to work out, okay? Because we're going to burn this sucker really deep. This is just kind of like an art abstract, I guess. I don't know. So, but the, for the roots... What I'm going to use, because, well, what I'm going to use for the roots and the tree trunk is just my normal grinder that I showed you guys. And get some nice smooth lines in there. Okay? And we'll, like, this removes wood fast. It's super fast. So, I'm going to show you. And, yeah, I'll show you. Okay, so I know these aren't the uh, nicest roots. They're kind of bulky. It's just, you know, it, it is what it is. But you can see how fast that grinder is. Um, the disc is getting a little old, so that's why you're getting the burning marks in there. It's getting worn out. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is burn burn the hell out of this with a little Mampa burner. Shosugi Ben, here we come. So Susie sh pooped her pants. I'll burn this really deep, and then I'll burn the uh, branches really deep, like the top part. The more you burn it, the more you're going to get rid of your, uh, like, cut marks when you use the uh, buffing wheel. You don't sand this. You buff it out. So you guys can see how I'm burning it. You got to burn it so you see red hot coals on it. And they call it uh, like an alligator effect, what the wood does. I don't know if I can zoom in good enough, but you can see it right in here. See how that wood's cracking? That's a good burn. This is what they used to do in Japan to... Uh, Preserve their houses back in the day. Burn the wood. You see that? That's a good burn. This is how you're going to get the grains to really pop. Okay, I'll get this. I'll get this done and the top done. And I'll be back. Okay, you can see here. I showed you guys the hot smolding coals, the top's done, burnt really good, okay? The, the trunk is on the bit thing. This is a jaw horse. So now what I'm going to do is clean it up. You guys, if you don't have a, a nylon wheel like I do, you can use, uh, what's this, like scotch bright stuff. Okay, you can, you can do whatever you want to do. You can get a uh, wire brush, wipe it off. 
But you see that? See how this is even just getting the grains to pop? Okay, so I got, where's my wire wheel? Oh, here it is. So I'm gonna put my mask on. This is a drill. And this is a nylon wheel, sorry. This comes from Amazon. They're in my Amazon store. You get these sets, uh, I think for five, for like 20 bucks. And I, this is a really good one, actually. So I'm gonna go along. The more that you clean it, I'm clunking a lot today. The more that you clean it, the more you're gonna get the darks and high colors to, uh, really pop and I can see this one there's gonna be holes in here because it burnt a little bit too deep don't care it just gives it character so let me get it plugged in and uh, start cleaning these up clunking again clunk, clunk. okay fucking plug it in fucking cocks ah. Okay. Oh. Whoa, look at the color pop in here. Some people will see these, uh, I'm gonna show you a real close up if you can see them, but there's marks, see in that white wood? You can see marks in there. Some people will say that um, that's from my brush, but it's not. That's actually the wood grain itself. But look at this color pop. Holy cow, screenshot right there. Okay, now on to the top. Oops. <laughs> okay, let me do this. Okay, mask on, ignite. Okay, so now you can see those quick cuts, how you get the grain to really pop and move around. I don't know what you can see with the lighting. The only thing I don't know, this fit right here, I should have made it tighter because you can see a gap there when I put this piece in, but that's okay. Let's see. I think it's kind of neat, yeah. Um, you gotta add, I don't know if I'm gonna, you don't have to, but I think I'm gonna add color, maybe, just a bit. I'm not too sure yet, I haven't decided. I got to, uh, what do I gotta do now? Oh, what I'm gonna do is put a clear coat on this. Can't find any of my spray stuff. I'm gonna look for it. If not, I got some Verithane here, some really good stuff, actually. Okay, I found some clear coat. This is matte clear. There's the name. And you're gonna see how dark it goes once you clear it. Is that the color you're looking for? It all depends. 
So I'll get these sprayed, and uh, when these are all sprayed, waiting for them to dry, uh, I got another idea. Well, it's not, I'm not the originator of this, maybe this style, but um, yeah, I'll, I'll sh let's just carry on. Okay, so we got these uh, extra cutoff pieces here. Now let's make some mountains or some rolling hills. So I'm gonna cut these out. Okay, I'm gonna cut these out. Oh, there, I'm gonna cut these out and then burn them, then do the same thing and you'll see how the grains really pop for these mountain things. They're pretty neat. Okay, so I got them sprayed. Here's the mountains. I'm gonna do two coats. There's one set of mountains. I know art's odd numbers. So if you count, these mountains are gonna be on the side of this tree. So one mountain, two mountain, trees three. So that's odd numbers. So I'm gonna let them sit overnight, dry, and I'll be back tomorrow to finish this up. Okay, so it's now the next day. Oh, don't mind this. This is a eagle I just carved for my friend's thing. Um, my buddy Ben, chain pro professional chainsaw carver, helped me. Came over, helped me uh, refine the eagle head, so my eagle heads don't look so much like dinosaurs. But yeah, I just uh, finished these talons. Anyways, let's move on. This tree here it is. I shortened the uh, talk with my buddy Larry Debs over there on Vancouver Island. I shortened uh, tree tree thing, the tree friggin thing tree stalk or whatever it's called. I can't even think about it. What name it? What is the goddamn name for the tree trunk? Jesus, tr trunk roots, round part. So there it is, okay? So now I've decided that I don't just like that, this here, I think it's too bright. Even though I've already sprayed it with that uh, Rust Oldham stuff, I am gonna give this a light green wash with spray paint and I'll show you how I'm gonna do it we'll uh, take it outside here and put it here so I'm gonna spray paint it well first of all I'm gonna spray it with some clear stuff rust all them spray it with the clear so it's then I'm gonna lightly spray it with the green and wipe the green off really quick and it will give it like a little green texture kind of thing okay I got my dr. Liz gloves on so now this is just what I do um, you guys can do, do it however you want to do it, okay? So I just kind of, it's like getting it wet with this. Get your spray paint. Doesn't have to be that much. Just give it a little. Okay. I'm just going to give it a wipe. So it's not cut the paint's not coming off that good. So I'll just give it some more of this clear coat to uh, loosen it up. Like put it on thick, make it like a uh, friggin whatever you want. And try not to get sawdust on it. Man, I'm just such a friggin hack. Jesus. Yeah, it's just sorry. This the sawdust is going on it. I picked up from the table, so anyways, there you go. Get the sawdust off it before everything dries up. I'm really just freaking careless. That's my problem. 
There you go. There's some green texture. Let's go uh, put it on the thing and see how it looks. I think it's a bit better. Okay, so everybody, I don't need to explain this. It would have been better just to do a square cut in here and just, you know, I don't, I don't want to explain it, but I'm sure most of you know. If you know, you know. So what I'm going to do right now is get some uh, wood glue, put it in the back there. Then I'm going to use this brad nail or braid nail or whatever they call it to nail it together. Okay, so it's glued. Perfect. Okay, so I don't have a wall to put these on right now, and I got to get this video done. But here you can see how it would look on a wall. So when you put these mountains on, put them just above the roots, and you got to make sure that they're perfectly square and equal on both sides, like they both line up to the same, like say 48 inches from the bottom of the floor, because then it makes it seem like a background. You could also, this would look really good on a fence. You could also like carve little tree, little trees, like uh, flowers, uh, a little car driving down the road. So that's, oh, I got one more thing to do too here. I forgot. I think this mountain needs something. Yeah, it needs a nice rising sun. You can make little things going off here, you know. It's just about having fun. That's all. Carving fusion. Over and out. Um, I just want to say that I wasn't too happy with that uh, tree. I'm going to make another video with a way better tree. And um, it's just going to be way better. I'm not, I wasn't even going to uh, upload this video, but there you go. Carry on.